Today I'm going to show you how to take the derivative of these three functions using the limit definition of the derivative. If you want to skip ahead to the medium or hard questions, take a look at the time in the description, but I'm going to start with easy. Okay, so we want to evaluate the limit as h goes to 0 of f of x plus h minus f of x all over h. Right, that's what the limit definition of the derivative is. And so let's start by evaluating f of x plus h in our function. Then we can subtract off the initial function and divide by h. So f of x plus h, we remember we replace every x with x plus h. So that's x plus h to the third plus 2 x plus h squared. And this is equal to, well, what's x plus h to the third? It's x plus h times x plus h times x plus h. This expression here, you could work out using FOIL twice, distribute all the terms. You could also just read off the coefficients using Pascal's triangle. This works out to be x to the third plus 3x squared h plus 3xh squared plus h to the third. And this is 2x squared plus 4xh plus 2h squared. All right, so what we worked out here is just f of x plus h. Now what we want to do is subtract off our initial function. And when we subtract off the initial function, we have all of this here. And then we subtract off x to the third plus 2x squared. Okay, and now notice x to the third cancels, minus 2x squared cancels. Okay, so we're just left with all of this here. And this is equal to h times. 3x squared plus 3xh plus h squared plus 4xh, sorry, plus 4x plus 2h. All right, I factored out an h. And now we're ready to divide by h and evaluate the limit as h goes to 0. Well, the h's cancel, and when we evaluate h equals 0, this cancels, this goes to 0, and this goes to 0. We're left with 3x squared plus 4x. Okay, and you could check your answer using the product rule. Right? What is the derivative of x to the third plus 2x? Bring the power in front. So 3x squared, bring the power in front again plus 4x. Okay, good. We got the first one right. So on to uh, the medium. All right, so here's a more challenging one. Our function is 1 over x squared plus 1. Again, we want to find the derivative using the limit definition. So let's just ignore the limit for now. Let's just worry about this different difference quotient. I'm ignoring the limit just so I don't have to write the limit as h goes to 0 each time. But, okay, f of x plus h minus f of x over h, this is equal to, well, what's f of x plus h? It's 1 over 
x plus h squared plus 1. So that's f of x plus h minus f of x is just this thing. And it's all over h. OK, so let's clean this up a bit. And then we can eventually evaluate the limit as h goes to 0. How do we clean this up? We get a common denominator. OK, so when you have fractions, first thing you should think, let's get a common denominator. So this common denominator will just be x squared plus 1 times x plus h squared plus 1. So this expression becomes x squared plus 1 minus x plus h squared plus 1 all over. We could bring this h into the denominator here, because right this is h over 1. h times and then the product of these two things. x plus h squared plus 1, x squared plus 1. OK, and I would recommend not distributing this out. I would just leave it like this. All right, what's our numerator? x squared plus 1 minus, OK, x plus h squared is x squared plus 2xh plus h squared. And it's all over the same thing. OK, x squared minus x squared cancels. 1 minus 1 cancels. What are we left with? Well, let's event now let's evaluate the limit as h goes to 0. What are we left with? We could factor out an h from, a from the numerator. So h times negative 2x minus h. That's our numerator. Our denominator is h times x plus h squared plus 1 times x squared plus 1. OK, h's cancel. And now when we evaluate the limit as h goes to 0, that goes to 0 and this also goes to 0. Our numerator is just minus 2x. And our denominator is x squared plus 1 squared, right? Both of these terms are x squared plus 1. OK, and how do you check your answer? Well, you could do the quotient rule, or you could rewrite this as x squared plus 1 to the negative 1 half and use the power and chain rule. Okay, So you could easily check your answer uh, that this is right. All right, so now we're on to the hard one. Let's evaluate this. Let's simplify this difference quotient, and then we'll evaluate the limit as h goes to 0, just like the last example. So what is this difference quotient? We replace every x with x plus h. So that's x plus h over the square root of x plus h plus 1 minus f of x, which is just x over the square root of x plus 1, all over h. All right, and again, we have a fraction. I know there's some square roots. Let's get a common denominator. OK, so this is x plus h times the square root of x plus 1 minus x times the square root of x plus h plus 1 all over. Again, we could bring this h into the denominator. So h times the square root of x plus h plus 1 times the square root of x plus 1. OK, and so what are we going to do when you have the sum or difference of square roots? It's typically a good idea to multiply by the conjugate. So let's multiply by the conjugate. I know this is going to be a little bit messy, but trust me. 
All right, so let me write out this whole thing and then I'll multiply by the conjugate. Okay, what's the conjugate here? We replace this minus sign with a plus sign. Multiply it to the numerator and the denominator. So this is uh, x plus h, square root of x plus 1, plus x, square root of x plus h plus 1. Denominator gets the same thing. All right, and so when we do that, the denominator is going to be an absolute mess. But the numerator is going to clean up a bit. The numerator is going to be x plus h squared times x plus 1 minus x squared times x plus h plus 1. Okay, all the square roots vanish in the numerator. That's the point of multiplying by the conjugate. The denominator... Uh, is this mess here. So I'm going to just leave it as a big mess. So h square root of x plus h plus 1 square root of x plus 1 times this whole thing here. If your teacher gives you this question on a on a times test, that's cruel. But homework this is fine because you have plenty of time to do those. All right, so why do I not distribute it out? Well, really, it's just this h in the denominator that we're worried about. We want to cancel it out. And then um, once that happens, we could just plug in h equals 0, and we'll be done. OK, so this numerator, we have this is uh, x squared plus 2xh plus h squared times x plus 1. And this here is minus x to the third minus x squared h minus x squared. Okay, and over the same denominator. So I'm not even going to worry about the denominator for now uh, because it's just going to take a lot of time. Okay, what is our numerator? Let's distribute this out. It's x to the third plus 2x squared h plus xh squared plus x squared plus 2xh plus h squared minus x to the third minus x squared h minus h, uh, x squared. Denominator is still the mess that it was. Okay, x to the third cancels out with negative x to the third. Two x squared h minus x squared h, that's just gonna be one x squared h. x squared minus x squared goes to zero. Okay, so what are we left with? We have an h in each term, so let's factor that out. So this is the limit as h goes to zero. We have an h, we have an x squared plus xh plus 2x plus h. Our denominator is still the gigantic mess that it was, but I'm going to actually write it out. h, square root of x plus h plus 1, square root of x plus 1, times x plus h, square root of x plus 1, plus x, square root of x plus h plus 1. Okay, we lost a parenthesis.
h's cancel, and then we could evaluate the limit as h goes to 0. So that term goes to 0, and that term goes to 0. Our numerator is x squared plus 2x, and our denominator is x plus h. Well, the h goes to 0. This is just the square root of x plus 1 times the square root of x plus 1. That's x plus 1 times, this becomes x times the square root of x plus 1 plus x times the square root of x plus 1. So times 2x square root of x plus 1. And there you have it. That one was tough, but it wasn't that bad. What do we do? Get a common denominator, multiply it by the conjugate, and then just clean it up. So let me know what you thought of this style of video, easy, medium, and hard. Would you like to see it for other t topics in Calc, Calc 2, Calc 3? Happy to make these types of videos, or any other class. Just let me know. All right, well, thanks for watching. I'll see you later.